Completing a Stuart Triple Expansion Engine Part 53. Cleaning and refitting the eccentric rods to the eccentric straps. Using some Loctite 603 retainer to keep them rigid. The drop arms were becoming loose. After drilling out the old taper pins I used the taper reamer and fitted some larger ones and now the valve gear is much better. Everything was going quite well with this engine rebuild but then I hit a bit of a snag. The first problem was it would not run in reverse and every one of the eccentric rods were loose on the eccentric straps. I removed all of the eccentric straps complete with the rods and as you can see by this clip the rods were only held to the straps using one 7BA countersunk bolt. OK, they can't move very far because they are in slots. Time now for a clean-up operation, starting with the rods. I'm cleaning them using some Scotch-Brite. I'm going to use an unorthodox method of holding these into the eccentric straps. First of all, I'm going to make sure all of the parts are chemically clean by using some acetone. This should get rid of all the oil deposits and the dirt. After using some acetone and a toothbrush, you can now see the difference. These are all squeaky clean. The next thing I need is some Loctite 603 retainer. And by using Loctite 603 in conjunction with the 7BA countersunk machine screws or small bolts, this should be a really good fit. I didn't really want to get any Loctite 603 on the threads. So I applied the Loctite just to the rods, pressed the rods into position and then tightened the bolts. A quick health and safety warning, get your hand in such a position that if the screwdriver slips it misses your fingers entirely. I took this opportunity just to clean the edges of the eccentrics. These are basically left as cast which I don't think it's the way I would have done it, but I wanted to leave it largely as the original builder made it. It's time now to fit the eccentric sheaves and it's really important to make sure these are the right way round. I've mentioned before that I prefer individual eccentric sheaves but for the moment I'm using the original ones. I'm refitting the eccentric straps to the sheaves and I'm fitting them on the low pressure end first. The offset on the sheaves for the low pressure cylinder is 15 degrees. Later on I'll show the drawing, although it will be blurred out for copyright reasons, and explain why I know that the eccentrics for the high pressure cylinder have a 30 degree offset and all the others have a 15 degree offset. I know that I initially applied some oil to the eccentric sheaves, now I'm applying a lot more to all of the valve gear. I turned over the engine with the electric drill and it's still a bit on the stiff side. I've turned the engine round, this is the flywheel end which is obvious. This is also the high pressure end of the engine. And if you look really carefully at this set of eccentric sheaves, you will see the offset is greater than on the ones at the other end. Although it's not easy to see in this image, just take my word for it. This is a very fiddly job. The 7BA bolts are very small and getting them to fit in position and put the nuts on is quite tricky. What I've temporarily done is put the flywheel on the other end so I can rotate the engine and set the timing at the high pressure end. Once I'd fitted the final eccentric straps, it was time to turn the engine over and see whether it was tight or not, and yes, it was still a bit tight. In this clip I'm filing the edges of the valve fork, but more importantly, have a look at the end of the drop arm. You will see a long taper pin in there and the taper pin that I used in the operating arm, which is bigger, holds it much more rigidly as it did previously, because there was quite a bit of movement between the drop arms, and now there isn't. The entire thing works as one unit. I'm going to run this engine to try and bed it in and make it smooth, so I think it's a good idea to apply a general coating of oil to every moving part. In this clip you get a clearer view of all the taper pins that are put in the lay shaft. I didn't video this, it was a horrible job. I had to drill out the old pins exactly in the middle, then taper ream the holes a bit bigger to take bigger taper pins. As I mentioned previously, I put a bigger taper pin in the main operating arm and here you can clearly see that. Once I put the engine back together, I had a mild crisis of confidence, so I took a look at the drawing to make sure 
that the pairs of eccentric sheaves that have the most offset are the ones for the high pressure cylinder. On this blurry drawing that I blurred out for copyright reasons, you can clearly see the greater offset on the left hand side one, the high pressure cylinder sheaves. And just to confirm, if you look at this image you can clearly see that these do match the one on the drawing. These eccentric sheaves have a 30 degree offset unlike the others which are 15. I'm about to do something that I don't recommend that you do so I'll put a red cross on it. I'm using my small Warco lathe to run in the engine. It sits on the cross slide and to make it level I have a piece of plywood with some rubber bands wrapped around it just to allow a bit of flexibility. I ran the engine for a lot longer than this and it is starting to free up a bit which is a good thing. Stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists and by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch and by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.